In this video, we will explore the concept of anti-fragility and how it applies to the video games industry, and more importantly, how it can help in shaping the future of video games. But first, what is anti-fragility? Before answering that, we would like to remind you to subscribe if you want to stay updated with our newest videos. Back to anti-fragility. There are things that benefit from shocks. They flourish and expand when exposed to volatility, randomness, chaos, and stresses. These things are called anti-fragile. The term anti-fragile is coined by the American Lebanese author Nassim Nicholas Taleb in his book by the same name. Think of it as the exact opposite of fragile. Now most of you would say that the opposite of fragile is robust, resilient, or strong. But just like minus is the opposite of plus and not zero, concave is the opposite of convex and not flat, anti-fragility is the opposite of fragility and not robust. If a fragile object must be kept away from randomness and stresses, by definition the exact opposite of that should be an object that wants stresses and randomness. So anti-fragility goes one step beyond robustness. To use an analogy to explain the phenomena, think of Hydra, a nine-headed serpent-like monster. It was said that if you cut off one of Hydra's heads, two more would grow back. Hydra invites stresses and thrives in them. In the real world, think of our muscles and the phenomena of overcompensation when we train. At a cellular level, we destroy our muscular cells and put them under stress. But through that, our body overcompensates for the loss and makes our muscles grow stronger. Our muscles, just like Hydra, are anti-fragile. They thrive under stress. Now it's important to distinguish between a system and the subunits of that system. Our muscular system is anti-fragile and increases through stress, while the subunit of that system, the cells, are fragile and die under stress. The same thing applies to our economies. The fragility of every startup is necessary for the economy to be anti-fragile. Restaurants are fragile as they compete with each other, but the collective industry is anti-fragile. Imagine, if each individual restaurant was strong and stable, then the industry as a whole would stagnate and weaken. So maybe it's important for the part to be fragile in order for the system to be anti-fragile. Nature has an efficient and simple way to create anti-fragile systems. Trial and error. It creates multiple bodies with a limited lifespan. Each time one of those bodies faces its end, it transfers information to the next generation in the form of genes, whether the genes are good or bad. Through this method, the gene pool as a whole becomes stronger. So there is no need for Mother Nature and the gene pool to prepare for the worst case scenario. Let it come, and the system will adapt. Every airplane crash makes airplanes, in general, safer. We learn each time from our mistakes and keep on improving them as a result of what we learn from the crashes. Black boxes work as a gene code that moves on to the next generation of airplanes, which makes the system, in general, anti-fragile by benefiting from the stress that affects individual subunits. While I was reading Taleb's book on anti-fragility, I was thinking of video games as a perfect example to demonstrate the anti-fragility concept in industries. The video game industry as a whole is anti-fragile, but the same cannot be said about individual companies. THQ, Midway, Atari, 3DO, Westwood Studios, and very recently Telltale Games are the fragile subunits that pay the price in order for the industry to be anti-fragile. Each year we hear about a studio closure, a publisher who goes bust, layoffs and cancelled projects, but the video games market has never been bigger. Consumers spend more money on games than ever before. People are playing on the trains, on planes, on beaches, and even in bed. We see many developers who start new projects with the hope of selling them later on in the App Store, PlayStation Store, or on Google Play. While their courage and risk-taking are among the best things that have ever happened to our industry, I'm afraid that some are mistaking the anti-fragility of the industry as a whole for the fragility of the subunit. I want to shift the focus now from anti-fragility at an industry level to anti-fragility at a developer level. There is one game developer in particular that I want to highlight as anti-fragile. It's Sony Interactive Entertainment. I have a lot of respect for their approach of investing in multiple smaller risks, and when some of these projects go south, the system as a whole becomes more anti-fragile.
Shohi Yoshida, the president of Sony's Worldwide Studios, mentioned during his panel at Game Lab in Barcelona that only four out of every ten projects they do are profitable, but these profitable projects make enough to cover all the losses of the other projects. It's this approach that helps them to discover ideas that prove to be excellent, and it's only through this method games like Uncharted, The Last of Us, Horizon, Heavy Rain, and The Amazing Spider-Man were created. By having multiple smaller risks, the company works exactly like muscle cells. They might die at an individual level, but they make the system as a whole stronger. Let's not forget that only a decade ago, Sony had none of the big games franchises it has now. Sony is using the same approach as nature of trial and error. I think every studio owned by Sony should put a sign on their door that says, what kills me makes the others stronger. Now some of you may think that I'm calling for blind risk taking. No, I'm only calling for the fragmentation of risk and creating anti-fragility where possible. Let the risk be embraced, but only at the subunit level. Of course, some studios owned by Sony went out of business and closed like Evolution Studios, Incognito, Zipper Interactive, and Game Republic. But this is the price fragile units pay in order for the whole organization to be anti-fragile. Their contributions are not worthless and their demise, like airplane crashes, helped the system to learn and to become more anti-fragile. Sony Santa Monica's masterpiece God of War came after a cancelled space game project and staff layoffs. That is anti-fragility in action. Remember, what kills me makes the others stronger. On the other hand, look at what looks like a big, stable, and strong gaming company. Activision Blizzard. It has a market cap of 59 billion, but it's the last company I would describe as anti-fragile. It only invests in franchises that are already established and really takes risks with individual games. That's the opposite of anti-fragility. The individual subunits are strong and robust, from Call of Duty, World of Warcraft to Diablo, all are established names. But at an organization level, they might not be able to adapt to any unforeseen paradigm shifts in the industry. Just like Nokia, who in less than a decade lost their market share of 49% and went to zero. Or Kodak, who owned the whole imaging industry, but unlike Hydra, when one of its heads was cut off, nothing grew back. The examples are abundant. Blockbuster, Yahoo, Blackberry, Motion, and many others who all have one thing in common, the lack of anti-fragility. Fragment the risk across multiple smaller subunits and let the system thrive in the face of unforeseen changes. It will adapt and evolve and with the right dose of anti-fragility, it might even end up thriving and shaping the course of an industry. No wonder it's smaller studios who experimented and succeeded with a battle royale system and not the big dinosaur publishers. Epic decided to take a small, controlled risk by changing its Fortnite game into a free-to-play game with the Battle Royale formula. The rest is history and anti-fragility. Jeff Bezos of Amazon is using the same principles with his company. They run multiple projects in all directions and they only need a couple of them to become successful. No one is pointing at their failure in establishing a good mobile phone as evidence of the failure of the company as a whole. The fragility of the subunits in Amazon is actually their strength. On the other hand, Activision is a static company in a dynamic industry. It might be the leader today, but what about tomorrow? Will it even exist? In his book Adapt, Tim Harford mentions that many scholars and businessmen want to understand why some, apparently capable companies, find themselves wiped out by a sudden shift in the competitive landscape. The group led by Clayton Christensen from Harvard concluded that it isn't cutting-edge technology that tends to destroy market leaders. It is stubbornness in sticking with old, big customers and the fear of losing them if alternative solutions are adopted that might not represent a lot of value to the current best customers. In the late 70s, leading disk drive manufacturers were making their products better and better for their main customer base of large corporations and banks with room-sized computers. To these customers, a new generation of physically smaller drives with much less storage was of no interest. But these new drives touched a new market for desk-sized computers. Eventually, the smaller drives became more advanced, provided bigger capacities, and even the mainstream customers began to buy them. By that stage, the established manufacturers were desperately far behind. 
Only a few years ago, no one was talking about or predicting the rise and dominance of Battle Royale multiplayer online games. It transformed Fortnite from a game with close to a million players into a phenomenon with hundreds of millions of players. Activision and Electronic Arts are like the older disk drive manufacturers, trying to catch up with the shift in the market, but it's the anti-fragility of the system that could have made it easier for them to adapt and take multiple risks at the subunit level. Activision might dodge a bullet this time by trying to implement the Battle Royale system in their Call of Duty game, but how long will Activision survive if multiple paradigm shifts hit the industry? One thing for sure, it's going to be a long time before we rely less on predicting and embrace anti-fragility as the tool to navigate the future. I think it's going to be a long, long time. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like our videos, then sharing them with your friends will help us to grow our community of video game lovers.